question, you can raise your hand and hopefully uh, Coach Carey will see you and maybe she can chime you in. But for the most part, let's just kind of follow in like we've been doing and we'll have definitely time for some Q and A. Um, how many of you have your bands? Did uh, Ability First sent you your, your exercise bands, right? If you, if you have them with you, I want you to pull them out really quickly. We're just going to do a quick little warm up. There's one and exercise training gets our blood flowing. And I just want to talk about a couple things that'll tie in with the nutrition part. So I'll give you guys a couple seconds to pull that out. It's got, she needs help. She's asking for help. Hey, Coach Mayo, do you have your bands out, Mayo? Ben, sure. Jackson, I can't even see Jackson's face. I need to see Jackson and Joseph. And Olivia. I see an O for Olivia. Dakota, you guys want to say hi to Dakota? Say hi, Dakota. What's up, Dakota? He's uh He's six foot 14 and 496 pounds. <laughs> He's growing like a weed, y'all. All right, so if everyone has your band, we're gonna get started just a little bit really quickly. So here's one of the most important parts about doing anything, all right? And that is keeping our muscles and our, our limbs and our joints pliable. Okay, pliable meaning we need to have range of motion. Because as we're sitting in our chairs or, you know, we build these big, strong muscles up in front, but we don't build them so much in the back. So then we get our shoulders to roll forward and it causes us some problems in the future. So what we're going to work on is two things. And if it's not applicable to you, do what you can to follow some of these. All right. So like, for example, Aurora, I want you to try to engage your abs. All right. When you're doing and you're using your arms and no, your strength. I'm not in the middle. What was that? Okay. I think it was just so, someone talking. So if this is applicable, and applicable means if you can do this, I want you to, and I'll try to pull my thing down a little bit. I'm going to sit on the front of my chair. All right, so my feet are out of my foot plate. All right, and I'm gonna sit tall. I'm gonna stick my chest out, my shoulders are gonna be level. And I'm going to engage my abs and my core to, to balance myself, okay? Does everyone understand that? We got some nods. So this is key. You can do this engaging your core at all times when you're doing anything. No slouching, so then you fall, engage. And you grab your base. So I have one like this. This is one of my favorites. Okay, make sure that our shoulders are not <gasps> leaning forward like this. We want them even, right? Upright, can you guys see my shoulders like this? Not like this, but like this. Yeah, then we're going to hold our hands out like this, <gasps> our arms, and then we're going to just pull <gasps> apart. Okay, so now when we do this, here's the important part. Abs are engaged, but when we do this, we squeeze <gasps> from our shoulder blades on the back side. We don't just do it with our arms like this. We come here and we squeeze with our shoulder blades. And, and we squeeze with our shoulder blades and come back. So, and if you need to hold on to it, it's fine. You can grip it with your hands if you need to. Aurora, that's perfect. You're doing great. So then we just kind of sit here. We're upright, yeah. we're strong, shoulders are level. Then we open it by squeezing our shoulder blades and then slowly back. Uh, shoulder blade and go slowly back. Uh, you will feel it in your core and you will feel it in your back. Camden, I want to see you do it. I see you look around. You see it. Yeah. Out here, I just squeeze with the shoulder blades and do that. How are you doing down there, Hunter? Okay. Suchi, you got yours. So let's just do that five times, right? Five times. We go one and back. Two. Remember, squeezing with our shoulder blades, engaging your abs. Man, that's not working. If you can. Three. 
back. And then back. Four. And then back. Five. And then back. And you feel it, right? So another one that we will do is, well, this one, this one's going to be a little bit harder. So we'll just see how this works. Staying upright like this, just like you are in your chair if you can. When you do pull that apart, I want you to bring your arms up and try to go to the back as much as you can. And then back up and over. I'm really tight. My, my, uh, <clears throat> my shoulders are like glue in there. So this is a really good one. Squeeze apart and then try to get them up overhead, maintaining your balance with your core and bring them to the back. How's that feel? Is, is, does that hurt? Like it hurts me? Hey Maddie, I see some of the kids trying to tie them into knots and if, it, if that's not working, you can just hold on to, just hold on to the band. And then come back up over your head. Yes, you could do it. Um, and Carrie's absolutely right. Good point, Carrie. So if I have I just, just a regular band just, like this, like I she just, said, you can just maybe wrap your hand around it and use it that way. You I don't need a knot. Mine. What's that? Mine teared. <laughs> it, it teared? Yeah. <laughs> okay. When I, was, well, when I stretched it. Go ahead. <laughs> If it tore, you try to do whatever you can. And you don't necessarily even have to have a band. Uh, you don't have a band. Just bring it out and then bring your shoulders up. Say, so do that a couple of times and then I think we're good. So, another thing, really quickly, before we get into the nutritional part, this right here is a weighted ball, right? They're like medicine balls. So you can get ones that are one pound, two pounds, five pounds, up to, you know, too many. Too many, too many. So this is another thing that you can do while you're sitting. I don't, it doesn't have to be a weighted ball. It can be a, a weight, you know, a small weight, anything. One pound to, to five pounds. You don't need much. But you can hold that ball out, engage your abs, hold the ball out, and twist back and forth, holding your core. Sister, go. And as much as you can. That way. Okay, and it does not mean you don't even have to have a weight in your hands. You just have your arms out and you're turning. But I want your arms together. Make sure your arms are together. Exactly. Because now we're starting to engage the core and our lower back muscles. And lower back muscles are important. And these are things that you guys can do super easily at home. And does not take that much time. But Mayo, see, Mayo, well, he's so big I mean, and burly. He's got like an 80 pound weight. I think. But if you watch yeah, Coach Mayo, he, yep, there it is. Just nice and twisting. So Remember, you're engaging your core. Making sure that everything is working together from your core. Then you'll feel that in your lower back, your lower quadratus. Your quadratus is your right and left side of your lower back. Um, and you, you'll feel that engaged. So these are, these are just quick exercises that you can do sitting at home. You can do this while you're watching TV, watching a movie, or just hanging out. Something that you should concentrate on. Anytime you can sit up in your chair, get your feet off your foot plate, and sit up and engage your core is a good thing. Okay? All right. Uh, any, any questions? Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's see. All right. So, Carrie, you give me the feedback. You can see we're good. Yeah, we could. I can see it. Yep. Okay. So today, you guys, we're going to talk about nutrition, and I know we talk about this at camp all the time. Um, and we don't always feed you the best of food at camp, <laughs> but for the most part, we try. Okay. So when we're talking about nutrition. I don't want you guys to just think, oh, I've got to eat, you know, all these vegetables and raw things. You know, there are live choices that we make um, that, that will create an overall body health. 
Okay, and that's what we're looking for. So this picture that I have on the front just shows a lot of healthy foods between the vegetables and the fruits, you know, and the grains, you know, there's soups, there's all sorts of stuff um, that we can do. So I'm gonna hit to the next slide. Whoops, Whoops. maybe. Okay. okay, so here's, your eating is a lifestyle. Okay, some people eat healthy, some people don't, right? These are choices that you make as an individual. And something I want you guys to understand too, and I know many of you don't really have a choice of what's in the refrigerator, or you haven't exercised that choice to be what's in your refrigerator at home and your parents take care of you and, and cook food. But you do have a voice about what you can eat or what you would like to try to eat to, you know, to help your overall body health and mental. So eating is a lifestyle. Eating healthy is a lifestyle. It's a choice, right? So, and like I say in this thing, your choice affects your overall health. So there's good foods to eat. There's foods to avoid. We're going to cover all those, those kind of things. And if you see the guy down at the bottom of the screen there, you know, that's just somebody kicking back, not eating healthy with the remote control in his hand, being lazy. You know, there is times for that. And that does not mean that you cannot do that. But what we don't want to do is do more of that than doing things that are active and eating healthy versus you know eating junk food okay so i'm going to move to the next one um this is just a a picture that's comparing diets so to speak and when i say diets it does not mean oh i'm on weight watchers diet a diet is just what you're eating so use that as a very broad term so it's comparing diets if you look on the left side of your screen does that look like a healthy choice You've got burgers and hot dogs and, you know, cheese and just a bunch of stuff that's not healthy versus the right side that's all that's the green. That's what I like. Say again? I said that's what I like, all the junk food. <laughs> right. You know, and you know what? We all do, Ernesto. There isn't anyone that doesn't like the junk food. Well, maybe some people don't. But for the most part, we do like that kind of stuff. And now when I'm talking to you guys about this nutrition, you know, Ernesto, and I see you, Emily, we'll get to you in just a second. Okay? Say that again? Yep. Okay, so uh, Ernesto, so it doesn't mean that you can't eat that kind of stuff, but the choices that you make, you need to start eating some of those things that are more healthy because in the long run, you're going to be more active. You're going to be, you, you, you'll be able to be active. If you're just eating junk food, you won't have any energy. You won't want to do, you'll be, you know, have a, a, a chance to be overweight, you know, diabetes, there's all sorts of things that come with not eating healthy. So do I say you can't have pizza or you can't have a burger? Absolutely not. I don't say that. You can but you need to do that in moderation and making sure you're fueling your body with things that your body wants to use, right? Because all we do is store all that junk food is body fat. And we know that body fat does not do us any good. Believe me, trust me, just, just Ernesto, just to speak to you on this, just three months ago, I was 220 pounds. You know, I'm down to 187 because of my life choices on what I'm eating and what I choose to avoid. Now, it doesn't mean I don't have some pizza sometimes with my son, but I know that I eat all the good things a lot more than I do the bad things. So, um, uh, uh, Emily, did you have a question? Yeah. Uh, uh, isn't sometimes cheese like good for you? Like the, like when you put it in like to a healthy sandwich or like a soup, like a healthy soup or a, a so salad. What, what were you, what was good for you? Like cheese. Isn't cheese. Well, like it, I mean, there's, there's, cheese is a processed, right? So cheese is what you call a processed food. Like there are cheeses that are better, like goat cheeses and things like that. They're a little bit better for you than say your, you know, cheddar cheese from the market, right? Because you're putting in the cheddar cheese from the market. It's all processed stuff that's packaged, excuse me, that's packaged. So not necessarily is cheese really helpful. You know, dairy products we're not really made as human beings our body isn't made to to consume breads and dairy you know that's not what our bodies are designed for it does not mean we can't but in the most part cheeses aren't that healthy but there are some cheeses that are better for you than the processed ones does that make sense yes 
So then as we go down here really a bit, so I'm just saying making choices. Here's a picture. You have stuff on the left and stuff on the right. And I know Ernesto, you're licking your chops on the right side of your screen. You're going, yeah. <laughs> but the bottom line is if you look at what's on the right and you look what's on the left and there is some cheese in this picture, does not mean you just need to eat cauliflower and a, you know, and a tomato or a, you know, an egg or a, or a banana. But if you supplement those snacks on the left with the stuff on the right, more often you are going to end up having a general overall body health and mind sleeping, all sorts of stuff. So making choices is a lifestyle and it's something that it has to be disciplined because we all want to hit the right side of the screen because there's everything on there that we like, you know? Um, so let me continue. So we're going to talk about proteins and veggies a little bit. Okay. Now proteins are good for you. Okay. But a lot of meat, there's, is there anyone out there that doesn't eat meat? I don't. And I can't see everybody. I don't know how to do that. Uh, I can let you know. Uh, Kumaker kind of raised his hand. Mouse said she doesn't. Right. Okay. So, and there, there are supplements, you know, to outside of eating meats, right? And that is getting your proteins through nuts, you know, getting your proteins through eggs, getting your proteins through, you know, various other outlets other than just meat. But what a general misconception sometimes is that, you know, steak and red meat and all that are bad for you. It's not necessarily that they're bad for you. They are if you're eating them all the time. You know, our guts don't, we don't, we don't process those foods and as quickly and as efficiently as we do other foods like berries and vegetables and, you know, say for example, fish, you know, chicken. But so the biggest thing is I want to talk about is portion sizes. If you are going to eat meat, just make sure that your portion sizes are, um, and you won't be able to see my fist. Uh, Mayo, can you hold up your fist or carry or so everyone can see? So if you kind of take your fist of your own body, that's about how much meat that you're going to want to eat, right? Your body. So it's kind of a general guideline right? Your fist is in proportionate to your body size and what you can and metabolize. And that's about the size and the amount of meat that you want to consume. If you're eating a big old thick porterhouse steak, like we love, if you're a steak eater, if you eat that whole thing, you're eating too much meat. Okay. At a particular moment. Um, so it's the portion sizes that are very, very important. So, and as we talked about a little bit, there's chicken, there's fish, there's, there's nuts, there's, you know, there's eggs, there's um, supplements. I don't know how many of you guys still eat um, tofu and things like that. I think I read some things that tofu wasn't supposed to be all that great for you, but I'm not an expert on that aspect. Um, but those that don't eat meat, like I think mouse would be a good person to speak to about, you know, those other supplemental uh, proteins. Um, so we're going to move. So I brought just a little veggie tray here. It's just a little picture of some veggies. Um, there's broccoli. Everyone goes, ooh, broccoli. But broccoli is so good for you. Okay, broccoli is so good for you. There's beets, artichokes, you know, asparagus, cabbage. You know, the lettuce, you know, generally regular lettuce doesn't have a whole lot of protein or not proteins, but a whole lot of nutritional value. It's more of the red leafy greens that are a little bit better in nutrients but doesn't mean that eating lettuce is bad, but don't just think it's a misconception. Oh, I just had a salad and I had lettuce with, you know, ranch dressing. Well, you just, you, you didn't get much nutrition there. So if you look at what's on here on this vegetable picture, one of the things I'm going to say to you is sweet potatoes. And I don't know how many of you like sweet potatoes or have had sweet potatoes, but they are much, much better for you than your regular potatoes. Suchi, you got a question? Suchi, Emily, did you have a question? question. Emily has a question. Uh, okay, I can't see all the faces. So yeah, Emily, what, what you got? Um, uh, for those people that do, I, I have actually have a suggestion about one of the vegetables. So mm -hmm. what my mom does to like, for all of us because I am a pretty picky eater with my vegetables I only like broccoli steamed broccoli I can't like I won't eat it raw 
Like it just right. had to like, taste to me. But if you eat steamed broccoli, it tastes. It actually tastes really good. Like you can't yeah. taste anything. It just t- the texture and like the my mom just puts a little bit of salt and a little bit of butter, and it makes it taste really good. Yeah. You know, and here and the, the butter too part of it, it will make it. There are types of butter that are better than other types of butter. So kind of make sure that if you do you're gonna put some butter on it, that you find the ones that you know are a little bit more healthy. I don't have that list of butters um, that would be better, but um, there are definitely like, like if you're putting margarine on there, that's not a good thing. That's you're 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 counteracting your health part of that. So, but you're absolutely right, Emily, if you do steam it, and sometimes you can even add garlic to it or, you know, salt and pepper does it, you know, just a little bit of anything like that, that can that help flavor it up a little bit makes a big difference. Um, it's like eating your spinaches and your salads and things like that. You can just add a little bit of, uh, you know, balsamic vinegar rather than using, you know, blue cheese and ranch dressing, which most people like, because that stuff is so bad for you. You know, you can say, you know what, I'm going to try to change. I'm going to eat some different salad dressings that have some nutritional value. And the more often you guys, I'm going to say this, the more often you try something and you eat something, the more chances you have of actually starting to like that. Like when I was a kid, I did not like broccoli. I did not like avocados. You know, I did not eat those. I didn't like tomatoes. But as I mean, I didn't like fish when I was a kid. Um, but as I got older, I started eating those things and trying them more and more. And then you realize, oh, hey, you know what? These things are good. And really what it is, after you eat them, you have to figure out, wow, I do actually feel so much better. Um, and later on, we're going to talk about a challenge that I'm going to give to you guys that, um, you know, versus, you know, eating some things to see how much different it makes you feel. So that's a really good point, Emily. So if you guys ever want to reference something, you can go back to this well, you won't have this picture, but you can always go online and Google stuff and just talk about, you know, healthy food, just put on there and healthy foods to eat, eating, uh, educate yourselves on what's good for you. Cause we all have allergies and stuff. Like I can't eat nuts, you know, I can't anything, you know, nut category, I have a, a peanut allergy and just an overall nut allergy. So I just stay away from them, but I get my proteins, um, you know, elsewhere. So, I'm going to move on. So here's just a picture of a salad, right? Here's a typical salad. You can have some chicken on it, avocado, right? It's super, super good. So um, there's lettuce, there's onions on this. There's tomatoes. Sorry, my phone is ringing. Um, this is a really good lunch dinner, snack, anything like that, right? And we'll talk about some good healthy fats here in a little bit, which avocados are, are good healthy fats. There's bad fats and good fats, um, avocado being a good fat. But if you have it on there, you have some chicken, you have some green leaf lettuce, you have you know tomatoes, you have avocados, you can put other stuff in there too and the things that you like, you could have, you could have nuts in there, you can, you can have uh, sunflower seeds, all sorts of things that you guys can put in your salad. This is, now, does it look as good as a cheeseburger, Ernesto? Is it, we still have Ernesto there? I can't see everybody. So it doesn't look as good as a cheeseburger, but I'm telling you that is the kind of food, if you supplement this more often than eating a burger or something unhealthy, it takes a little bit more time to prepare, but this is something where you should be striving for, especially if you're going to be an athlete or just your overall health. Okay, let's see. We're going to come here. So I'm on here. I have a, just some pictures of fruits and nuts. Um, strawberries are really, really good for you. Blueberries are super good for you. Um, they're high in antioxidants, um, uh, which we'll talk a little bit more in a little bit, um, especially if you um, have organic, um, you know, organic uh, berries are a lot better than the store processed ones. You have, you, you have, a, you can see a lot of things on there like almonds are so good for you. There's avocados and you're going to see avocados in just about everything that's healthy because it's one of those foods that's good to eat and healthy. You've got some oranges, red oranges. You got some, uh, or that's probably, uh, I'm drawing a blank. I know what that's called. Grapefruit. Thank you. You're so awesome. That's why you get paid more money than me. 
Thank you. Yeah, so there's grapefruits and there's things like that. So you can eat oranges and apples and bananas, strawberries. All these things are great snacks to use versus running for a bag of potato chips, you know, something else. And these are all sources of nutrients for your body that your body wants, likes, and needs. Um, so that's important to remember. We're going to move to something that we talked about just a minute ago. Okay. Um, and I can't see everyone's faces, but I know that we all have, you know, our fair share of health issues. And we've all been on antibiotics, right? Can I see a show of hands? How many of us have been on antibiotics? Yep, you got a lot of hands and head nodding. Okay. So a lot of hands and a lot of head nodding. Now, antibiotics, right, they do help kill infections and things that are they're attacking our body that we need. But antibiotics also kill the good bacteria in our body. Okay, and this is very, very crucial point for many of us that are on antibiotics on a consistent basis. Um, and that is eating foods that are high in probiotics. So probiotics are what give you these bacteria. They're cultured things that provide the good bacteria into your gut and your system that helps you break down foods, helps your body absorb the good things. Yeah, and, and help you fight off diseases. The probiotics are, they're just, you want to have them. So if you, if this picture is kind of sucky, but one of the biggest things on there that's easy for you guys to get, and that's yogurt. Now, Olivia, can I ask you a question? Yes. Olivia, do you like yogurt? Yeah. What's your favorite yogurt? Uh, peach yogurt. I don't, I'm trying to think brands. We've done a couple different brands. But. Well, not so much about the brands, but and this is why I just asked. I just randomly picked you out. But I, you know, I'm just saying a lot of us like yogurt and we like the flavored yogurts. We like the ones that have the fruits and the sugars and the processed stuff in it. They do have some forms of probiotics in them, but we want to start avoiding those. You can't, it doesn't mean you can't have them but you want to start eating more of a, a, uh, a yogurt that's, you know, high in acidophilus and it has less sugars. Um, the, the vanilla, the straight vanilla yogurt that doesn't have the artificial flavoring. Then then you use that yogurt with your fruits. You put fruits inside with that yogurt. So you actually have real raw fruit with your yogurt. So it gives you that flavors. And now you're getting your probiotics and you're getting good, healthy fruits versus what's happening inside those yo play yogurts that are loaded with sugar which we'll talk about in a little bit too and it's it's a it's it's processed foods so um there's other things on there that you can eat that are high in probiotics do you guys like celery can i see a show of hands that eat celery does anyone like celery okay so celery is one of those wonderful wonderful vegetables that you can eat or juice, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit, that has high in nutrients, high in probiotics, high in all those good things. So that's what a great snack you can get right there. Get some good, you know, organic peanut butter, shall we say? And you can have that on there with your, uh, with your celery and have that as a snack. Um, so you're getting your proteins and you're getting your probiotics in your system. Um, kombucha. Is there anyone out there that likes kombucha? Because I know that's a tough one. Olivia, you like it? Emily, you like I it? I love kombucha. Uh, Aurora, do you like kombucha too? Maybe. I only like the sour up the sour green apple one. Okay. So when you take a look at most kombucha is really good for you. Now, I'm not an expert on kombucha, so I, I will be speaking a little bit out of turn, but I do know that they're high in probiotics, right? And that's because of the things that they're made of, okay? And that's made out of. You so you can find, always- Sorry. Go ahead, Coach. I say, no, no. Just, if you're going to drink a kombucha, same as the yogurt, you just got to find one that doesn't have that added sugar. Some of them do and some of them don't. And, and even when you drink kombucha, you want to drink it in moderation because some of them still do have a lot of carbohydrates that do break down just like a sugar would. Right. You know, um, so pickles, uh, Emily, go ahead. Also, uh, a lot of people have been doing this like on, like on Instagram. I don't know if 
if anyone has seen it, but Ginger Shots, mm, which is like a, it's a really good, it's really good for your immune system and all that. Mm -hmm. I've seen that. Ginger, turmeric, and we'll be talking a little bit about that stuff here because I'm going to juice with you guys. I'm going to show you a couple of recipes that I do um, that I love. And, it, you know, my, my overall health and my overall energy um, is so much better. And I actually, my body craves these things now, which is really good. Once you start putting these good, healthy things into your body, and then all of a sudden, well, that'll be part of the challenge later, but we'll talk about it for a second. When you do start feeding your body with this healthy stuff and then you go eat something that's not healthy, like a cheeseburger or a pizza or something like that, you just, your stomach, you just be, instantly you'll be like, Ugh. you know, it just, your body just rejects it. But once, if we're, you know, if you're eating McDonald's burgers all the time, your body doesn't know any different. Uh, so the, the probiotics, and I will encourage you guys to do a little bit because I'm just touching on the probiotics. Take a look at what's out there and things that you might do because probiotics i'm telling you right now all of us coaches included counselors anybody anybody that's on antibiotics or just in general probiotics are awesome and there are some supplements if you can't get it in the raw foods there are some good supplements out there for probiotics as well because these are they're, they're really necessary especially in today's world um let's see so we've got some foods to avoid okay sodas let's just talk about soda we don't even have them in my house. Doesn't mean that we don't ever have them, but we don't have them around. We don't encourage them. Sodas are the absolute worst thing on the planet. And in my opinion, that's just my own personal opinion. They're, they do nobody any good whatsoever. And you can supplement those things with other forms of liquid consumption that we'll talk about in a minute. So the saturated fats, processed foods, the oils. If you look at this picture down here, you got corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oils, all that stuff. Those are the types of oils to avoid when cooking. And a lot of people use them in, uh, you know, in their household. And I have some oils here that I will show you, but olive oil is better. Um, uh, there's avocado oil that you can use for cooking. There's coconut oil, coconut oil being one of the, one of the betters in my, in my opinion, coconut oil is one of the better. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many oils. I'm not going to list them all, but one of some of the main ones, like you see like Crisco and all those, those are the ones to avoid. There's nothing good out of those things. They clog your arteries. There's no, there's, they don't even cook well. They break down in their enzymes and food because they don't handle high heat and, we won't get too much into the, to the details on all that, but know that there are much better oils and I will show you some of those uh, here briefly. Um, so let's talk about processed foods. Um, who can give me, who, who wants to give me, let's, let's talk about five processed foods that you might think you eat. Let's just, uh, Kamaka, tell me, can you tell me one processed food? Mm. Kamaka, are you not? Oh, there he is. Do you, do you know what I mean by processed foods? To avoid? What are they both, Kamaka? I, I can't hear you, Kamaka, at all. Um, like, and it's okay if you don't, because this is why we're here, to learn. Maybe someone can help him out. Oh, Hunter. Right. Hunter's got his hand up. Pasta. All right, Hunter. He said pasta. Mm. Okay. There are some forms of pasta that, that are processed. Um, Kraft mac and uh, cheese. There, there, there we, that's, there's where we're hitting the nail on the head. How many of you like mac and cheese? There's a few hands. There's a few. <laughs> Aurora's <laughs> getting excited. In there too. I think Camden. Yeah, Aurora like mac and cheese. Okay. Camden had a, his hand up. For uh, an example, is another processed food like cheese and stuff still? Like, it's like one of those like dairy stuff. Some of them could be processed. American cheese is very processed, huh? Okay. Yes, cheese, mac and cheese, um, uh, chicken tenders, pizza pockets, Co uh, cereal for the most part. Go ahead. Uh, even um, olive oil, you should avoid olive oil also, or just? Um, well, olive oil is better 
then, I mean, obviously it depends on where it comes from. I mean, you, the more organic you can make it, the better, but olive oil is, is good, but it does. And we talked a little bit about this. It does break down in heat a little bit easier than some of the other ones. Like I mentioned, like coconut oil and things like that, they, will, they, they keep their integrity in a higher heat, uh, you know, when you're cooking certain things. But I think olive oil is a lot better than these Crisco's and the canolas and the, and the, and the, the crud like that, that, that are in many kitchens. Okay, so let's talk, you know, some more about processed foods. I mean, if you look at most of the stuff that you can probably open up your cupboards and your refrigerators, um, let's talk about um, how many of us like fruit snacks. You like fruit snacks? Yeah, they come in a little thing. They're, they're, there's nothing nutritional in that at all. Um, they're processed fruit chunks of no fruit with artificial flavoring. Now they're delicious, but those are processed foods. Those are the things that we want to avoid. Things high in sugars, you know, anything that's processed and packaged. And the reason it can last so long when it says, you know, that this is a, this is a telltale sign that if it lasts till June 27th of 2035, then you probably know it's processed and it's probably not all that good for you. Okay, I'm using, I'm exaggerating on the date but I want you guys to understand that those processed foods are what we need to avoid. We need to start eating things like fruits and vegetables, things that are, you know, they spoil a lot faster. I, I understand, you know, bananas don't last that long, but if you eat them and you do, or you can freeze your, your fruits, some of your fruits you can get frozen that are, that are a lot better for you and you can eat them in smoothies and you can do things like that um, versus, you know, going to grab that bag of potato chips. Because we all love the potato chips, but man, let me tell you, they're not so good for you. Um, and let's see. So as we talked about some of those processed foods, let's go. So the next picture here, you see Fruit Loops. You know, you've got hamburgers. You've got French fries. You have a picture of a soda with a bunch of sugar cubes. And then you got the kid over here who's looking like he's just ready to go to town, you know, pop tarts, you know, these, these are all foods on this thing that we, a lot of us consume daily milk being one of them. Milk, milk is really not that good for you guys. Um, you know, there's other forms of milk, like almond milk, coconut milk, things like that. They don't taste as good. And it's not something that we're used to, but they're a lot better for you than your regular non-fat or low fat it actually has been stated and you know some of you nutritionist specialists can correct me if i'm wrong but they're saying a lot of the times that you know the natural high fat you know milk is actually better for you than the stuff that they're processing is the low and the non-fat <clears throat> it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the, the diet coke oh i mean i'm drinking diet coke well yeah, it's worse for you than even just drinking regular Coke. <clears throat> it's not, there's nothing diet about it, right? It's just because it has less calories. So if you look on here, these are a lot of things that we like to eat. And I'm going to reiterate this to all of you. This does not mean you can't enjoy the things that are in front of you. You just have to do it in moderation. Don't drink the soda. Drink the water. You know, drink a, a, an unsweetened tea. You know, drink a kombucha you know, have something or, you know, I mean, obviously juices. So there's a, there's a fallacy out there like, oh, I'm just drinking orange juice. Well, <clears throat> orange juice is really high in sugar too. And it's a processed thing and that it comes in a carton, you know, but if you're, if you're eating, you know, freshly squeezed orange juice, that's a whole nother story, <clears throat> but it doesn't mean that you can't drink orange juice or, you know, some sort of grape juice and all that, but they're really high in sugars and sugars are the stuff that our bodies doesn't break down and we store as fat and we do. And it's, those are the things that we need to avoid on a regular basis. And again, I'm going to reiterate, does not mean you can't have them. It just means you have to put them in moderation. And then, <clears throat> so let's talk about, you know, sodas versus water. Sodas versus the unsweetened tea, like I talk about. Processed juices versus the freshly squeezed. <clears throat> All these things in front of you, I love. I mean, I love a Fanta orange soda. Um, how many of you like uh, uh, jaritos? You guys drink jaritos? <clears throat> anybody else yeah there's a How few you, hands yeah there's a few hands man one of my favorites you know you go to the you, you go to the taco wagon and you know you get yourself a burrito and a jarrito a jarrito and i'm a, I'm a happy guy <clears throat> but when it comes down to it try to make that and challenge yourself 
to say, you know what, I'm not going to have that soda. I'm going to drink water. And if you do choose to have that soda, make sure you are drinking water as well. Don't just drink the soda, you know, like the unsweetened teas or the kombuchas. There's all sorts of drinks out there that are, have some health benefits to you versus just stuff that is <clears throat> like all the drinks that are in front of you in that picture are terrible. <clears throat> so speaking of water, I'm going to need to get some in a second myself here. Um, we did probiotics, I already did that. Sorry, it was a double slide. <clears throat> okay, so I want to talk to you guys a little bit quickly here about sedentary, sedentary versus active. Sedentary meaning I'm, I'm sitting around or I'm laying around, I'm not doing anything. I'm not getting my body active. I'm not burning calories. I'm not, you know, burning the fuel that I'm giving my body, right? Or versus being active. So now I was talking with Coach Kerry about this, you know, it's called sitting disease, okay? But that does not mean because we sit, we have a disease, okay? That's, you know, it's a, that's a misconception. We do sit, most of us are in wheelchairs, right? You know, the few of us don't, but you know, it's called a sitting disease, meaning it's the people that are there and they're sitting in their cubicles and they're working and they're sitting in their chairs for 11, 12 hours a day, right? And they're not getting the exercise. That's why they call it sitting disease, okay? I just wanna make sure everyone's clear that it doesn't mean that just we're sitting, we have a disease. So what we're talking about here is the lack of activity, being sedentary, like that first picture I showed you guys on the opening slide of the guy laying on the couch with a remote control in his hand. That's sedentary. You know, we're athletes. We're ability first. We are people that want to seek life. You know, we want to, we want to see lifelong activity. We want to be out there doing things excuse me in the world rather than sitting around now is there a time to sit around and relax and chill and put your feet up and and watch a movie absolutely but what we need to make sure we don't do is do that like if we're playing video games how many of you play video games okay how many hours let's say um let's i i, I can only see a couple of you so i saw kumaka okay, so camden let's ask camden camden how many hours a day do you spend playing video games be honest. Um, five or four. Five or four. So does that mean we're probably going more like six or seven, Camden? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and the reason I'm saying this is because, yes, video games are fun, right? But we're being sedentary. We're not doing anything. You know, exercising your thumbs like that's not burning calories. Now, it doesn't mean that you can't play them or not do. But make sure for, you know, that you get – outside or even inside even if it's too hot if it's 110 outside nobody wants to go out stay in the air conditioning but you need to be to do that um kamaka you got a question that was an accident oh okay um so if you look on it this little thing it says there's 300,000 deaths in the united states alone that occur every year from people in the lack of, of activity and poor dietary habits <laughs> So they eat unhealthy and they don't exercise. That's 300,000 deaths a year, okay? That's a lot of people just from this particular thing. Now, I mean, obviously this is just one, you know, study or one graph, but in, like it says, on average, Americans just sit for 11 hours a day, not doing anything, not being active. Um, the, as you get older, you guys are a little bit younger, right? So your metabolism, your metabolism works a little faster, especially those with CP. If you have CP, you guys, you, um, just by your, your, you know, having cerebral palsy alone, you start burning. Um, hold on one second. Um, so you just start burning calories a little bit more. So I've been talking for way too long. I'm just going to move on here really quickly. So I want you guys to challenge yourself. Be active, active for 60 minutes a day, 30 minutes minimum. If you can get 60, get 60. Coach Mayo did a great thing in the very beginning of camp, right? He just grabbed some cups in the house. If it's too hot, threw some cups around and then wheeled around and picked them up, you know, and how fast can you do that? You know, giving yourself to it and do it 10 times. I mean, it might get boring, but you can change it up. You can go walk your dog. Um, I have a picture here of somebody out of his chair kayaking. 
Um, I think I have some other pictures. And I was Googling, just so you all know, Googling image of active wheelchair users. And who did I come up with? Coach Carrie, right there on the left. She's doing a, a, an advertisement for Apple Watch, right? Because they know that she's an active person. They know she's an athlete. So they're using someone like Coach Carrie <clears throat> to advertise Apple Watches because they're now designed for wheelchair users to track how many pushes and how much exercise you are getting, it's your heart rate, you know, so we have, which is really cool. And that goes to show you, I mean, this is Apple who's seeking out Coach Carey. That's pretty amazing. Um, I did not know until I, I did not know that until I found a picture of her. So you have people playing basketball. You have somebody just wheeling through some cones. We have someone kayaking. <clears throat> you can walk your dog. You can, you, you can use your bands. Get your heart rate up. Get things going and moving, okay? Those are the biggest things that we can do, whatever activities you like to do. Um, shoot. All right. I'm going to take you with me really quickly because we only have a few minutes left because we want to do a health quiz for you right at the very end. And then I'm going to take this off. How do I unshare? Jerry? How do I unshare? I was muted. At the top, you should be able to, yep, you got ah, it. There you go. Here we go. Okay, all right. So here, just really quickly, you guys bear with me. I'm gonna do some, a couple things with you. So I have right here, and Carrie, tell me if this is in a good spot. Can everybody see what we got here? A table of celery, some bottles. Yep, so we have Apidophilus and a probiotic. This is like a supplement you could get at Trader Joe's. Here's one that you can get at your regular store that's a probiotic. This is one I use every day. Um, there's things like bamboo extract. One won't get too much into detail on that, but it's super, super, super good for you. Um, one of the things for us in wheelchairs, um, our joints get used a lot. Um, we tend to get arthritis and have uh, joint inflammation, you know, as, especially as we get older in years. Turmeric. Raw turmeric is great, which I'll show you in just a, little, in just a few minutes. But there's a good supplement, too, um, of having turmeric every day. It helps your joints. Here's your celery. You know, we have some blueberries, which are great snacks. Um, we have your balsamic vinegar, fruits, oranges, and that's some olive oil. And I do have some uh, uh, coconut oil, and I forgot to pull that one out. But so that just kind of gives you an idea. This PB8 is one of my favorites. And this comes recommended from one of my uh, health nutrition ladies. Her name is Jenny Lebon. She's, uh, she's pretty amazing. So then I'm going to take you over here. And this is what I do every day. This takes a little bit of time. Not much, though. Can we see, is this a good view? Yep, we see your cutting board with a lot of fruits and vegetables. So we have spinach. We have some kale. I have carrots. I have apples. I have beets. I have ginger, Emily. Um, I have ginger in here, and I usually have raw turmeric, too, that I do. Um, and right now, I'm out of turmeric. Um, that's why I took the supplement. So here is my juicer. All right. So what I do is I turn this juicer on, and then I start juicing beets. And you're going to see when it comes out, pulp comes out. I don't know if everyone can see that. I'm kind of holding on. The pulp comes out, but the juice goes in the dish. All right. So and then as you do that, you can just do carrots. Make sure that you're washing carrots. Make sure you wash all your produce before you do any of this. Um, then you can do spinach. Right. <laughs> And just throw some spinach in there. I'm just going to make it really quick. Throw some kale in there. So that's throw a, some... you have a pretty fancy, um, uh, like juicer, but you can, you can use a regular blender to make different types of smoothies and stuff if you don't have the fancy one, right, Maddie? It, it, this is very correct, Carrie, and that's a great point. So you don't necessarily have to have that. There are, there's these bullet things that are out there now. Um, or just your regular blender. And we're gonna talk about that in a second here and I'll just pan over there while that's going. And I have my, what I do for my smoothies and my blender for my smoothies. I have a Ninja, but you can do it in any regular uh, blender. 
So this particular one, I just like because it juices so well. So then I'll just stop this. So as you juice, now it comes out kind of a crazy color and all that kind of stuff, if you can see that. But yeah. when you're done juicing all of these things together, it's all such good nutrients. Your energy level will be so much higher. It's almost like um, it's, it's, it's just giving your body all the nutrients that it needs. And the, it's what your body wants to use for energy rather than like, like a sugar high. Like how many of us, how many of us had a sugar high before where you, you know, you eat sugar or something like that and you're all hyper for a few minutes. And then all of a sudden you're like crashed out. I'm just tired. Or Ernesto, you always got your hand up. <laughs> I think Camden, yeah, exactly. Camden had so, a question. Go, go ahead. Um, so what do you do with the rest of the, like, the pulp and stuff of it? Um, well, you, there's a few things you can do with that, buddy. You can, um, you know, you can go put that out in, in uh, um, my brain, help me. Compost. Compost, thank you. See, this is why Dr. Baum gets paid so much money. So you can compost it or you can throw it away. Um, so it's... Either way you look at it, it is, it's, it's a wasted byproduct of all that, but it's great for composting. So that is something that you can do. Otherwise, I just open up my garbage and go like that. Okay, so when you're, when you're doing these things, so really quickly, and I know we only got a couple minutes, so I'll come over, and I'm not going to make one, but I use frozen blueberries. Sometimes I'll use frozen peaches. There's good berry style mixed berries that some of them have kale in them, blackberries, wild berries, raspberries, strawberries. Now you see my bananas are brown, right? On the outside, right? A lot of people go, ew, I'm not gonna eat those. Well, these are great for making smoothies. You know, they're great for making banana bread, all sorts of stuff if you're gonna make home stuff like that. But don't, don't shy away from that. But I also like to use, you know, fresh strawberries. I will use fresh peaches or fresh nectarines, kind of put them in my blender. The cool part about using the, the, frozen, um, uh, the, uh, the frozen fruits is because then I don't have to add ice. I can just use my frozen stuff. Now you can put water in to, to make it a little smoother. You can put orange juice in there to make it smoother. There's, I mean, you can virtually do whatever liquid you want. I mean, I, I, guess, I guess you could do, you know, I guess you could do soda, but I think that would suck. <laughs> can, I, can I say something about like, making smoothies or eating and eating or juicing and stuff. Um, I don't know, maybe for the first time, if you ever do it, um, you may want to do it like when you're not planning on going anywhere because it might be such new, so healthy in the roughage. It sometimes can either make you go want to have to poop, like when, maybe when you're not planning to, but also sometimes for me, when I first start juicing, and I do, it's so great. But for some reason, it puts my bladder in hyper overdrive. And I just, I have, it'll make me pee like a lot, which is great. But if you go out or you're stuck in a car, um, it's not convenient. And so when you first start doing it, maybe making sure you're, it's a time when you know you're going to be home for a few hours so that you can make sure your body, you know how your body's going to react to it at the beginning. But then as I continue to do it, my body gets used to it. And then I don't have to pee as much or worry about it making me want to poop when I'm not supposed to. <laughs> Just to be honest. Well, and that's a, that's a huge point. Anytime you change your diet and do things, you're going to run that risk, you know, mm -hmm. and that's included eating, you know, well, cheeses tend to bind you up a bit, but anytime you start introducing new foods or, or st foods that aren't good for you, most of those times, that's what's going to happen, right? But the more times that you introduce, like Coach Kerry said, it's going to change your system a little bit. But once your system gets used to it, then you're going to start being a lot more regular. Or you can decide what's good for you and your body versus what's, you know, because what works for me doesn't necessarily work for Mouse or Coach Mayo or, or, or Aurora, right? So we each have our own, you know, makeup and stuff like that, but we can start introducing these healthy foods. I promise you guys, if you do, and the challenge I want to give you is to eat healthy. Try to eat super healthy for the next week and a half. Let's just say, I mean, I would go two weeks, but let's just say 10 days. So if you can get in there and start avoiding all the pizzas, avoiding all the stuff and eating fruits and vegetables and good, healthy foods. And then after those 10 days, see how you feel, right? And then 
go eat a slice of pizza. Mm -hmm. Just have one slice and see how it makes you feel, right? And then see how it kind of goes, you get lethargic, you know? And what your body does, your body goes, oh, gross. Or, you know, eat a hot dog. I, I can't even believe I said that. Don't eat a hot dog. <laughs> You're terrible. Um, but, you know, so uh, challenge yourself on that. And I know we only got a couple minutes here. So, um, Carrie, Carrie found a really cool quiz. Can we, Carrie, can you just pop that up? And I say we put everybody off a of mute and let's just blurt some answers and Carrie will. Yeah. Can everyone up. unmute themselves or do you need help? All right, let me get it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Let me get it ready. And... I don't know why. Oh, there's Cheryl. Hi, Cheryl. Oh, wait. Uh oh. I've got music playing. For some reason, it's not letting me share it now. Okay, well, you know what, Carrie? Maybe just let's just ask the question. Oh, here we go. Um, All right. Can you guys see that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. So, which of these breakfast foods provides you with the most? Uh, I, I, it's cutting off the side here. Which of these breakfast foods will provide you with the most energy? A candy bar, whole grain cereal, or potato chips? B. B? I don't know. You are correct. All right. Which types of food should take up the most space on your plate? Fruits and veggies. Meat or green? A. 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 Don't agree? Mm -hmm. A. A. You are correct. All right. Oh, here's a question. What should I do if I hate broccoli? I actually hate cauliflower. Feed it to your dog. Give up on eating vegetables or give these a chance. I heard someone say C. C. I say A. Correct. <laughs> Only when your mom's not looking. And even exactly. your dog, even your dog doesn't like broccoli. My dog exactly. Does. Dog doesn't. Oh, here's a great question. This came up earlier. If I want to stay healthy, can I just still eat French fries? No fast food ever. No, but American French fries are okay. For sure. Just not every day. See. 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 And that's a key thing to remember, you guys. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy these these things in life. Just be in moderation. So here we go. What a nutritious after snack. Potato chips and soda? Apple, cheese, and whole grain, a donut, or a bread. B. B. C. Now I want some honesty. Who's going to choose B? B, I would. I would definitely choose B. And even, I would even say, you know, throw out the cheese if you can. But an apple and an old piece of cheese isn't bad. Hey, Ernesto, I'm going to mute you because I think your car radio is on. All right. How much veggies and fruit should you eat daily? One to two cups or one to two pre uh, pieces of fruit? Eat veggies or fruits only once a month, or eat a hundred cups a day. Oh, a so a. one to two yeah. cups, right? Or one yeah. to two. actually, you should probably eat one to two cups of fruit. Yep, and not or, right? Yeah. All right. I have one more question. Which of these foods is best source of calcium? Bread, yogurt, or apples? B. 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 Yeah. All right. I think you guys 
I'll prove that you've listened to Maddie, taken in some good information. So, um, really good. Thank you, Carrie, for that. Um, and all of you, and I know it's just a couple minutes past the time. Um, I want to thank you guys for logging on, and I hope you guys are really enjoying this virtual camp like we are, because it's great to see your guys' faces. You know, we miss you dearly. I mean, I mean we miss the coaches. We, I mean, not having actual camp really sucks, but, you know, the, the people that are behind Ability First, may, I mean, all the faces and coaches and counselors and, you know, whatnot have really made this virtual thing go off and i'm so thankful for it and i'm so thankful for you all tuning in too. keep tuning in because there's more fun things to be coming along and more things to 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 do so i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap this thing up with you guys make some healthy choices think about what you're eating start to kind of just absorb what you are putting in your system and kind of be like oh yeah that isn't so good and if you're you know if your list on the bad side is way outweighing the list on the good side well, man, let's make a conscious choice to start evening that out or even tip the scale on the good side versus the bad. Um, and I promise you, you will have more energy, you will sleep better, you'll, you'll even be smarter. Mm -hmm. I, I, Mayo, you'll be smarter. Does anyone have any questions? Last, yeah. final question. Can I just point something out? So, you know, lots of times in sports and people who lift weights, they talk about supplements like extra protein and um, protein shakes and that sort of thing. But I like that Maddie didn't even bring it up because really, unless you're working out really hard and like you, you are like a bodybuilder type, there's no need necessarily to have some of those protein shakes and those sorts of things because you get those, if you're eating them in your, in your daily diet and fresh fruits and vegetables, and eating what's recommended, then that is that is what you're, you'll get what you need without adding it, um, not in a not a not a fresh way. Oh, except look at there's Maddie. He does have some. Yeah, just stuff like that. It's it's been in my. I think this has been in my uh, cupboard now for five years, and it's still good. <laughs> it hasn't it hasn't gone out of its its, its date yet. But the Carrie's right. This stuff definitely has some things and some values to it. But if you just eat those regular foods like we've been talking about and doing it, you don't need these things at all. Can I can I add something about the Yes. Okay, so um, for those of us that have like bladder issues and kidney issues, high protein is not good for us. It's gonna make our kidneys work way too hard and it's gonna make us sick. So just be wary um, and something that we've kind of talked about is reading our labels, seeing how much of each thing is in what we eat. And also, um, a, if y'all are allergic to latex, point. if y'all are allergic to latex, limiting things like bananas and avocados because those things have natural latex in the outside um, and it may give you a reaction. Just. I did not, I, I knew <laughs> bananas, I didn't realize that avocados it's, did. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. <laughs> bananas, bananas and avocados have some sort of latex on, on them? In the, uh, yeah, in the peels. Like, um, huh. my, my latex allergy has kind of gotten worse as I've gotten older, and I actually can't eat bananas anymore. Avocados are okay, but um, I can't eat bananas anymore. Is it, is it organic bananas, or is it like just bananas, you know? I think? It's just bananas. It, it's like, it's what makes up the outside part of the peel. Um, so, but you, you, can, you can still, Cameron, hold your thought. Can I see your hand, Cameron? Just one second. Yeah. Um, so uh, Matt, so, so I can understand that. Um, if you were to scoop the avocado out or have someone else peel the banana, are you okay? Or is it even because that actual fruit is touching the, the peel? It's just that it's been touching it. Like avocados for me personally are fine in moderation, but um, I can't, like if I, if you made me a smoothie and you didn't tell me that you put bananas in it, my throat would start to get scratchy and I would be able to tell that you put bananas in it. Okay, that's really good to know. And especially for all of you, that's a great point by Coach Mouse is that you need to know what affects you. 
you know, and what you might be allergic to and what foods and stuff that you can eat. Because, you know, especially with someone like me, I'm talking to you about nutrition and things like that. I mean, I, I know some things, but I'm no, I'm not, you know, a guru on some level that I know all these things. But what I do know is the things that you can put into your body that are going to make you healthy. But Coach Mouse knows what she can put in. Like I cannot, if you were to have nuts or something in a salad, then I would get very allergic and, you know, and someone's going to have an electric shock and, you know, especially with like the latex. So that's, that's really huge. Something to pay attention to. All right, Camden, you had a question, buddy. Um, so for some of the milks have like some fats in it. Um, which one would be like the best one to drink? That's like, like probably coconut or almond. I'm, I'm, you kind of, you kind of got broken up there. You were asking what kind of milk is better? Yeah, like uh, um, has like less fat and stuff, and sugar. Yeah, I mean, typically, yeah, the almond milk, the coconut milk, things like that. They don't taste as good. But really, if you look at like if you if you take a gallon of milk that you might have in your refrigerator, look how much sugar's in there. You know, there's there's a lot of grams of sugar inside of a gallon of milk, or you know, one one glass of milk can have just as many grams of sugar as a soda you know, which we all know has what, like 70 grams of sugar in, a, in one can of soda. Mm -hmm. um, so those different kinds of milks, yes, there are things that you can try. It takes a little bit of time to adjust to a taste if you're used to it. But like I said, what I was reading, and maybe some of you might know better than me, um, but what I was reading is that some of the regular milks, the non, well, the ones that aren't processed to be non-fat or low fat, the ones mm -hmm. that are high in fat, vitamin D and all that kind of milk are better for you than those other ones so if you are going to drink milk or goat milk supposed to be really good for you um you know things like that i don't know if you've ever tried goat milk but it's it's not and, high on my favorite yes and the other thing too is just that um you know sometimes people think like oh these soys and almond milks are just as you know they're 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 good for you and they're the trendy thing but really you have to be careful about the amount of sugar and drink the plain ones because the flavored ones um, that don't taste as good have a ton of sugar in them. Um, the new one that everyone likes, and I actually really like it, it's actually a pretty comparable milk um, alternative to eat in your cereal or to, to even cook with is oat milk. And so like someone like Maddie could yeah. probably drink an oat milk because it doesn't have almonds or nuts in it. And it's gluten free, so if you have those types of issues, um, it's a really nice alternative. Um, and then also because things like almond milk, if you want to get into the environmental stuff, <laughs> there's a, all sorts of things wrong with everything. But so you've got to you've got to just figure out which one you like, which one fits your diet, which one is affordable, um, and that sort of thing. Oh, uh, been on for an hour and ten minutes now, and I'm really loving the fact that we get to see some faces. Are there any are there any other questions you guys might have? And if there's not, um, Carrie. Sorry, what was that, Maddie? There's skit nights tonight. Yeah, skit night. Thanks for the, yep. Uh, Aurora is very excited. I saw she's got Yay. some skits posted. Uh, saw a couple of you guys have skits posted. It will be live, so you can join on Zoom and then watch it, um, just like when we share our screen. So Joe, counselors Joe and Quinn will be our hosts. And as you all know, they're extremely funny. Uh, and it should be a really, really good time. Yeah, share share with everyone if you guys are all connected with other campers and things like that. I mean, of course, we will too. But, you know, if you guys are on Snapchat or whatever, tweeting, Twitter, what all the things that you guys do, TikToking, <laughs> let everyone know tonight because, you know, Skit Night is one of the best nights. So yeah, just make sure we get, we get a big crowd. And until then, you guys all stay safe and stay healthy. Practice that. Clean hands. Wear your mask out in public and stay healthy and eat healthy. I challenge you, eat healthy and you have a voice. Let your parents know what you want to eat. Let hey, them Maddie, know. 
to Maybe add you to can that, get them on healthy if they're not already healthy. To That's add to that challenge, after camp in a few weeks, we'll reach out to you all and check in. We can talk about what you guys have done. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I'm going to do the challenge. I'm going to be juicing. Once we hang up, I'm juicing because I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> okay. Well, it's great to see all your guys' faces, and we'll see you guys tonight for skit night. Say hello to your family, yes. and we miss you. Thank and you thank so you much. Bye. 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 Bye.